Okay. Um, so once again, welcome everyone to our Sakai 21 Lunch and Learn session today. And I realized I, I named these before I scheduled them. So um, it ended up being at 10 a.m. Eastern, which I realize is a little early for lunch for those of us on the East Coast. So if you prefer to call it brunch and learn, please do. Um, and I thought these eggs looked pretty appealing. So, <laughs> um, so we can call it brunch and learn if you like. Um, I'm Wilma Hodges. I'm the Director of Training and E-Learning Initiatives at Longsite. And I'm also the Sakai Coordinator for the community. So um, today I'm gonna be showing you a little bit more in depth about some of the new features in 21. And this is part of a series. So there's gonna be two more of these. There'll be another one next Friday and the following Friday, same time. Um, so hopefully you will join us uh, for some of those as well and um, encourage you know, anybody on your campus who might be interested in learning more about those new features to attend. Um, all of the sessions, as I mentioned, will be recorded. So I'll put them up on YouTube after the fact and uh, send folks the link if they didn't get a chance to catch it live and would like to watch the recording. So um, just a couple of quick you know, housekeeping things. Um, please do keep yourself muted unless you're talking, um, but we will have time for questions. So uh, once we get to the question portion, feel free to unmute if there's something that you'd like to ask. Um, or if you think of something as I'm kind of going along, feel free to type it into the chat and I'll try to get to those chat questions throughout uh, the first part of the uh, presentation. So um, feel free to, to put those in there and I'll try to address them as they come up. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get going. So today's menu is dark theme and dashboard. These are two brand new things in Sakai 21. Um, so I don't know how many of you on the call have actually had a chance to um, see them. Maybe you're already running 21. We do have a few institutions that were kind of chomping at the bit to upgrade. So there are some institutions out there running 21 already. You may be familiar with some of these. Um, but for those of you who are not uh, familiar with 21 yet, or maybe these options are turned off in your instance, um, this should be new for you. So um, dark theme is, um, it's, it's like dark mode, or you've probably seen dark theme in other software applications, like in um, you know, the Apple iOS and um, in you know, various different uh, devices have a dark theme these days. So some of the benefits of dark theme, um, they tend, it tends to be a little easier on the eyes in low light environments, particularly, and some folks are concerned about too much blue light, uh, if they're on screens all day, every day, as most of us are. So, um, so it tends to be a little easier on the eyes. Um, it can also help conserve some of your battery power if you're you know, using it on a tablet or a phone or just kind of carrying your laptop around because there's not as much, um, not as many pixels firing because it's a darker overall theme. It'll help conserve battery a little bit anyway. Um, and plus it looks cool. So a lot of people just like the look of it. They like to be able to have that option. Um, so in 21.1, it's enabled. Now, if you're on 21.0, it was, it was not enabled. We had it off by default in the, the .o release. But in 21.1 and later, um, dark theme is enabled by default, but there are several different properties that control kind of where it shows up. Um, and only some of these are enabled by default. So I'm going to go through these so you can uh, kind of know what to expect, and then we'll take a look at dark theme itself. So, um, so this little snippet over here is just part of the uh, default Sakai properties file, just kind of that section so you can see what it looks like. Um, but the, the uh, property that you want to set is actually this one here. So um, to enable it on the system at all, this has to be set to true. So by default in 21.1 and later, it is set to true. And this allows it to show up as an option for a theme. And you can get to it under preferences. So when the user logs in, if you go to preferences, um, you'll see another tab there for theme. And that's where you can choose the dark theme. There's also an option to set the dark theme on and off. It's like a toggle in the drop down menu from the user. Um, icon up in the top right 
corner of the screen. So if you um, if you set this property, this allows you to to use this little toggle here in that menu. Now this is set to false by default. So if you want to turn this on, you have to um, set this property to true on your system so that it will actually show up uh, for everybody like that. Um, and one of the reasons it was done that way actually is um, we were kind of phasing it in a little bit slower, um, but also the overview page, which is usually the page that people land on when they first enter the system. So it's likely to be the page that they're on when they're going to switch this. You have to kind of refresh the screen or maybe not all of the components on that page will immediately switch to dark theme. So, um, so if you see like a, a portion of the overview that doesn't look quite right, if you just refresh, then it, everything's good. But, um, but that was one reason why it wasn't surfaced by default um, in this spot in the UI. There's also an auto detect option for dark theme. So what this does, um, and you'll see that it's also set to false by default. If you wanted to um, have this enabled, you would set it to true and it picks up whatever the user's operating system preference is. So if I've already chosen dark theme in Windows, because I'm a Windows user, or if you know, you're on your iPad or iMac or whatever, and you've, you've selected dark theme, um, the Sakai system will detect that when you log in and change it over for you. So you, can, you don't have to worry about setting dark theme. You can just, um, it'll, it'll set it for you automatically. So, um, so that's kind of where that happens. Let's see, I'm seeing something in the chat. Um, Terry's asking that uh, they're moving people over to dashboard, renaming overview. How will that interact with dark theme? Um, dashboard actually looks very nice in dark theme. So um, it doesn't have that refresh issue that overview does, at least not in my experience. So um, you should be fine with dashboard. And we'll, we'll get to more about dashboard a little bit later. Um, okay, so let's go take a look at it. Um, you've probably seen in my little screenshots kind of what it looks like, but we'll actually go to nightly so you can see what it looks like when you toggle over. So, um, so here again, if you go to preferences, you'll see that there's the theme tab and you can choose, oops, that's interesting. I was switching it back and forth before just to make sure everything looked right for the session. Um, okay, so this is what it looks like when you switch over to dark theme. And if you wanted to switch it from up here, you can do it also, you can toggle it. Oh, I think that's what happened. I toggled it off here and it didn't update there. I'm on nightly by the way, so that's, this is our test server. Um, so I'm gonna toggle back to on so you can see what it looks like. And if you kind of navigate to different tools, you'll see um, that you know, everything's kind of a, a dark background with light text and um, it looks quite nice. So, so that's dark theme now. And here you'll see this is an image with a white background. Um, so that's why there's a block around that. But you also have to kind of be careful with any images that you use like in the message of the day or, or something like that. Because remember, if this were on a, a, um, a transparent image on a dark background, you wouldn't be able to read the Sakai very well. So you have to think about contrast. Um, so if you're gonna have any kind of imagery in your messages and you don't know if people are switching to dark theme or not, because that's an end user decision. It's not a system-wide sort of setting for everybody, um, just keep that in mind so that you make sure that you maintain appropriate contrast so that people can see what you're actually um, displaying for them. So um, does anybody have any questions on dark theme before we move on to dashboard? And you can feel free to either type them in the chat or come on the mic. Okay, I'm gonna take that to mean that nobody has any questions. So we're gonna move on um, and we will talk a little bit about Dashboard. So Dashboard is a brand new tool um, and it's, I'm gonna 
demo this one on TriSakai where I have it enabled. Um, Dashboard is a brand new tool and it's sort of intended as an eventual replacement for the overview tool. So you may be accustomed to the overview tool here with the you know, various blocks of content. Um, so Dashboard is supposed to be kind of like that, but a little more modern um, with some different types of widgets available and more choices for the user. So I'm logged in as an instructor right now, but I have um, control over my own dashboard and students would as well. So students can control their own uh, home area dashboard. Uh, when you get into a course, there's another version of dashboard there, but that one is controlled by the, the instructor. Uh, so the home area dashboard welcomes the user, it picks up the username, and um, the message of the day is still there. It's just kind of collapsed. So you can kind of expand and collapse to, um, to view that, any messages that would be available. And then you see there's these various task widgets. Um, that's what we've been calling them. So we have, a, um, we have a, a task widget, we have an announcement widget, we have a calendar widget, a grades widget, and a discussions widget. And <clears throat> these are meant to kind of surface things in your course that you might need to pay attention to or that you might want updates about, any kind of upcoming information, that sort of thing. Um, the discussion widget is really meant to kind of mirror the message center widget that's currently in overview. So um, people use that quite a bit. So we made one that is more or less the same, but for dashboard. Um, I'm viewing this as the instructor, so I'm seeing course averages here for the grades widget. Um, but these little arrows, like if I follow any of these, it'll take me to um, that item. So it took me to the grade book to view those grades. Um, or if I'm over here and I see a link to an announcement, let's say. So if I click that, it's gonna take me over to view the announcement. Um, so likewise with anything like an assignment or something that has an upcoming due date, um, those things would show up here in the task widget if there's a, an assignment with a due date associated with it or if uh, the user adds an item. So you can actually add to do items here, like you can make a reminder for yourself, you can give it priority, um, you can, you know, describe what it is, and then add it as a task for yourself so that you can actually check that off once you've completed it, you can check it off. So it's kind of like a little to-do reminder um, sort of thing, but you can also um, look at anything that is, you know, of a particular priority, anything that's overdue, because again, it's meant to surface assignment dates for students um, and you can sort by, uh, you know, the latest, the earliest, um, lowest priority, highest priority, that kind of thing. So if, if I had more things do, you would see more items here. Um, if you have more than one page of items, you get this little paging uh, thing that shows up at the bottom that allows you to cycle through so that you don't get one big long widget that takes up the whole page. So that's kind of how that works. Um, calendar is, is you know, pretty much the calendar, but if we have any events, it would um, cir circle those and you would see them kind of listed similar to what you do on the overview page. Um, you can edit your dashboard here as a user. So if I go in here to edit, it allows me to move these widgets around. So if I wanted to reorganize things, maybe I don't want announcements and I don't want grades. Um, so I can change the order in which they appear and save. And then my dashboard is set up in that particular configuration. Um, if I want to add a widget back in, um, it's gonna show me any widgets that aren't currently there. So the two that I removed, I can put back if I like. Um, and again, I can move them around if I want to. Um, and uh, that way they're all back on my page and then I can save it. And there you go. So that's kind of how it works. We are still adding widgets. These, were, these are kind of the first batch of widgets that we came up with. 
um, but we're looking for suggestions for other things that people might want to see here. There have been a lot of great suggestions. Um, if you attended Open Up Here, we had kind of a brainstorming session about this, um, and people were looking for things like, you know, maybe like analytics or, you know, um, the you know, student's last visit to a class, things of that nature, maybe in a widget for instructors. Um, there were some ideas for instructor widgets versus student widgets. So if you have a thought on a widget you'd like to see, please let me know and I will um, take that note and pass it on to our developers. Um, so let me look at the chat here and see uh, what the questions are so far. So, um, you probably won't see, I, I see Mary asks, where's the dashboard? I don't see it on my page. You won't see it because it is um, hidden by default. It's experimental. I'm going to cover that next. Um, but it's something that the administrator for your uh, Sakai system has to turn on or add for you um, until it's enabled for everybody. So that's an admin um, decision at the system level. Um, let's see. Uh, Jennifer wants to know, dashboard is all courses overview when they sign in, correct? Yes, it's an aggregate of all the courses that you're enrolled in. So I'm going to see assignments and announcements from all of my courses, just the same with discussions. And you'll see I've got three different courses here that it's giving me kind of a snapshot on what's new. So it's going to aggregate all of your course info um, for that user to display on the dashboard. Um, Bonnie wants to know, but dashboard has me turned into has turned into site info managed tools in order. Oh yeah, you have um if it's been uh, unstealthed in your system, you can go to site info to turn it on. But if you don't see it there, it just means it's still stealth. Um, well, Mark, can you clarify something for me? Mm -hmm. It's my we have twenty one point one. Mm -hmm. And it's my understanding that dashboard isn't available on the home Sakai site yet, only on individual course sites. Am I mm -hmm. confused? Um, it has to be added, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So it's something that, that you have to by our administrator? Yes. Okay. Our administrator didn't think it was available either, so that's, that's why I asked. Yeah, well, that's why we're having this session, so... Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Perfect segue. Um, oh, before I leave, I just want to show you because um, Terry had that question about um, the dark mode and how that looks. So, our dark theme. Sorry, we're calling it dark theme. So, it looks quite nice with dashboard. As you can see, everything kind of transfers over pretty well. So, um, it's, um, it's, 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 I think a little bit friendlier with dash, uh, dashboard than it is with overview, um, but this is overview. If you happen to be, like I said, on the uh, other version of the theme and you switch it, this block sometimes stays white until you refresh. So, um, so that's why we uh, don't have it turned on here. This is a different server, so that toggle is actually not turned on in the system. All right, so let me go back and show you some of the um, options that you have for dashboard. So there are some options. And again, these are set at the Sakai properties level. So there's that Sakai properties file for some of you who may not be familiar. I didn't mention this earlier, probably should have. Um, the Sakai properties file is something on your server, your instance of Sakai that controls a lot of these system level um, options. And so your, your Sakai administrator or your administrator or your hosting provider will go in and make changes to that Sakai properties file if you want to turn certain things on and off or set um, specific preferences for tools. Um, so that control is on kind of at the very top level. Um, and then there's some additional options where you as a, a, an instructor can turn it on and off within a course. Um, so these that I'm talking about here, these properties, these are Sakai properties sort of server level settings on your instance. Um, so dashboard, as I mentioned, has a number of widgets. It's got a task widget, announcement, calendar forms, and grades. Um, right now, those are the default. The default is to have all of them on 
the home dashboard. Um, but this is just an example here, this one in kind of the lighter peach color text. Um, this is an example if you only wanted certain ones. So maybe you don't like the grades uh, widget, you don't want it on there, you could leave it off the list and then it won't show up as an option. So you can decide even if you turn dashboard on because it is stealthed, um, you can uh, choose to just enable certain widgets if you like. You can also um, choose which ones you want available on the course dashboard because there's kind of two dashboards. There's the uh, home dashboard and the course dashboard. And actually, you know what? I don't think I showed you guys the course dashboard because that one is a little bit different. Let me, I'm gonna switch back to um, light theme because I'm just more familiar with that one. A little more comfortable for me. Um, okay, so let me go into a course. There's a dashboard here, which is a tool in the um, list here, kind of like overview. And if you put it in the top um, location at the top of the list, it's going to be the landing page when someone enters the course. This is the course dashboard. And this one is slightly different than the home. Um, you'll see the message of the day is not here. Uh, instead, you've got this area at the top where you can have a picture and a course description. Um, but then you have any other widgets that might be available below that. So let me go to edit here and you can see that you can actually change the text of your description there. You can change out your course image. Um, you can also choose a different layout. And so there's some different default layouts in here. So if you prefer a different setup, you can kind of change it to a different um, overall format. So this is kind of a two column look. Um, or you can go back to the default, which I kind of like, which is this one, um, where you've got the course info at the top and then the widgets below. So, um, and, and just as you could on the, uh, the home dashboard, you can move these around or get rid of certain ones. If there's one that you don't want to show, you could you know, take it out and uh, move the other ones around. So that's what it looks like within a course. Um, and Mama, you, yes. Do you have a vertical image that you could put in that spot? Most of our faculty headshots are vertical. And mm -hmm. when we tested it, it leaves a huge white space between the, a vertical image doesn't work well on that spot. It, yeah, it will let you crop. Um, so you can try cropping a little bit, but you're right. It's sort of set up for kind of a landscape. Um, style image. Um, you can always, if you wanted to use one of the other layouts instead, um, like this one, for example, you can use the rich text editor to put the image in the editor and then you can put any yeah. type of image that you prefer. Um, so that's kind of a workaround, but that's a good note. I will, um, I'll, I'll, take, a, I'll take that feedback to our uh, developer and see if there's a way we can swap it out so that you can modify the orientation of the you know, rectangle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be great. More yeah. Options. yeah. We found that layout three looks most like the overview layout. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and if you are just doing the straight transfer over whatever you've got in overview, if you like the way it looks, it translates well. That was why we gave people a few layouts. So we gave one that was very similar to what they're used to and to make the transition a little more um, gradual for folks. Um, but I believe option two is the default because it's the, you know, it's the most different looking. So we wanted to kind of expose people to that so they know that it's there. Well, um, we don't want to shock people. <laughs> so we're going with layout three. Okay. And it's been really handy in making some trans uh, these transitions that all of the content that's already in overview comes into dashboard. Yes, yes, it picks up the um, the site description. Um, so that's what shows up on that overview page, and it also will pick it up automatically here, which is kind of a nice thing. Yeah. Do we have any questions on the the tool itself again before I jump to properties? This one, have, uh, like contents of widgets that you can add. 
contents of widgets. Yeah, yeah. Each of those little things, the grades and discussions and stuff, but the widgets that you might not be aware of how you would get to those and add them. You mean to add another widget? These are the only three that are currently available in, in the okay. course. Um, I thought there were more. There are if you change that property that I showed you guys just okay. a second ago. But on this particular server, we've only got it set up for those three. Okay. Um, but they're basically the same ones that are on the home dashboard, which are here. So you can you can add any of these on the course home as well as the the home home, um, depending on how you've got it configured. So let me go back here. I have a question. Yes. Are there any new widgets currently in development? My assumption is, is that there are, but do you have kind of a, a preview of what might be coming down the line? We don't have a preview just yet. Um, we're sort, still sort of in the collecting ideas and deciding which one to do first um, stage and our developer kind of got pulled off on another project. So he hasn't been able to come back to dashboard to do more widgets. But as soon as I have more information on there, um, I'll, I'll be happy to, to share what we've got in the works. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, so here's the, the property I mentioned, uh, Terry. The, the ones that we have, um, I think on the course home right now are only these first three. Uh, so you can decide which ones you want and you can put tasks there as well. These are the default ones, um, but you can also add tasks on the course if you want it there as well. That's the home. Um, and as I've mentioned a few times, uh, it is experimental. So it's still kind of uh, being built out. And we've, we've, so we've stealthed it because it's not, it doesn't do everything that we kind of envisioned quite yet. Um, and we're, that means we're still building widgets for it. We want to, you know, have people play with it and see if they find any, um, you know, feature requests or, you know, usability issues that we can kind of tweak before we roll it out in a big way. Um, so that's what is mean, meant by stealth. It's a tool that's kind of hidden from normal users in the system. So um, because it's stealthed, you have the admin has to actually put it into a course before you can see it. Um, and this is the, the property that controls whether something is stealthed or not, and it is stealth by default. So if you want it to be unstealth, you need to remove this property. So you don't want um, this property to, to equal Sakai dashboard in your properties file. You want to take that out so that it won't be stealthed and everybody can see it. Um, so that's an option that, again, you'd have at the system level. Um, so adding a stealth tool to a site, this is how you would do it. Um, so if it's still hidden from everybody, but it's there, you know, it's just you have to be an admin to get to it. You would need to go to the sites tool um, in the admin workspace and then locate the site ID and then go to add edit pages, new page, put the title of the, the thing, which in this case is dashboard, um, click tools to select your tool, um, select new tool to select dashboard and then save. So let me demonstrate because I know that's kind of a lot of steps um, that's maybe not uh, as intuitive as it might be. So let me just go in. I have to be logged in as admin. Um, and it's in the administration workspace. So I want to go to the sites tool and let me just pick a course. Um, you can either search for the course by site ID or by uh, keyword or even user ID if you're looking for a specific user. I'm just going to pick a course here because this is just a demo server with some random courses on it. Um, so once I've selected the site that I want to add it to, I go down here to the bottom where it has add edit pages. And I'm going to add a new page. These, if you look, these are the tools that are already in the course and the order in which they appear on the tool menu. So the, this, is, this is all the stuff that's already enabled in that site. I'm going to add a new page because if I went to the site directly and went to site info, I wouldn't see it because it's stealth. 
So I can't add it from there. You have to add it this way. So I'm going to go dashboard and I'm going to um, go to tools. And then I want a new tool. So I'm going to select new tool. And then I'm going to choose dashboard from the list. And this you can actually search if you start typing, it will locate it for you, which is handy because it's a long list of tools. So there's the dashboard. And once I've done that, um, I can hit done here and it will take me kind of back to this page. And then if I want, I can move it around. Um, I can move it with these arrows up to the top. And this is something that isn't so much important here because you would um, maybe want to, you could do that from the uh, tool order in site info. Once the tool exists in the course, you can move it around there. Um, but this will be more important for, for another thing that I'm gonna show you in just a second. So once I've got it in the, the spot that I want it, um, then I can save to complete my total edit of that site. I could have saved from that other page right after I added it. I just wanted to get back to the, that screen where I showed you ordering, um, but that's an optional step. So now that I've done that, if I actually um, go to that site, it would show up there in the, the list of tools, even though it's not available for selection um, in site info. Now, the other thing that I want to show you is how to add it to the user's home sites. Um, and this was a question that Bonnie and a couple others may have had, that it, it's not going to show up in the home site by default. You have to kind of add it because it's, um, it's not in there already in the template. Um, there's something called a, a dot or an exclamation point user site template, which is what is used to generate the home site for users when they log in. So whatever's in that template, is what goes into the home area. And because there's no site info there, you can't manage tools directly. So even if it's unstealthed in the system um, where you normally would be able to go and select it from site info, you can't in home because there's no site info. So, um, so the admin has to add it in that user template site first. So the way you would do that is basically the same way that you add a stealth tool to any site. You just have to locate a very specific template uh, site to do that. Um, and then you can use that optional up and down arrow to, to place it where you want in the list of sites. So let me, um, oops, let's try to get back to, nope, wrong server. Did I close it out? I did, I closed it out. Okay, so here, what you want to do is in sites, you want to search for the dot user site, and you'll find it there. This is the one that's the basis for all the other uh, user um, home areas. And then you go down here, and then from here, it's just like any other site. You go to edit pages, new page, new tool add it here and then you use the arrows to move it around. If you want it to replace overview, then you need to move it to the top and remove the overview from um, the home site. Now, another thing to note that's important is that this will only take it, um, effect on new user accounts. So all your existing users, even after you've edited this template, all your existing users already have a home area because they've already logged in. That's that home area is generated automatically when a user logs in. So um, since they already have one, it's not, they're not going to see the new stuff. So what you have to do is you actually have to delete all the home areas on your system um, so that when the user logs in again, it regenerates based on the template that you just modified to create a new home, home area with the the new set of tools that you've provided for them. Now it doesn't delete anything in their resources. All the everything's pretty much going to be the same because there's not much content in home. It's mostly just showing you um, different tools and synoptic widgets and things. So it's not going to delete anything. Um, it will sort of just refresh the um, list of tools and any links that you have available.
So, um, so that's what your admin would need to do to refresh all the home areas for everyone in your system. We at LongSite have a script that we can run for our clients to do that um, behind the scenes so that you don't have to kind of go through and, and do like a, a mass delete. Um, we kind of do it in the database. So um, if, if you're a LongSite client and you need help with that, uh, let us know. All right, so questions, Has anybody got? questions. All right, let me look at the chat here. Let's see, I see something from Harold. Um, question about dark theme, if you want to change certain colors, so certain text or images look better, is that managed separately from light theme or is that all one set of code? Um, if there's, there's a different uh, set you can set your colors you can customize them so like you can have a, a dark theme logo for your institution that's different than your light theme logo um it, it's made to um, allow you to to manage those two skins a skin is a, a color scheme in sakai so you can manage those two skins separately um judy asks I think my Sakai's dashboard feature is currently on stealth since I can't see options to allow it. Yeah, it's, it's stealth if you don't see it. Um, Terry wants to know if you should eliminate overview on home once you put dashboard there. I probably would, unless you're easing people in like super gradual. So maybe you even leave home overview where it is, is like the first thing. And you put dashboard in there is maybe the second item in the list and just let people kind of play with it and get familiar with it for a little bit before you switch it on them. Um, that way you can get their feedback. You can ask them, hey, go in, check out this new tool, tell us what you think. And then if there's anything that we want to fix um, before you know you roll it out in a big way, then you can put in a, a JIRA or send in a ticket to get those, um, those fixes in before the rollout. All right, I don't see any other new questions. Does anybody else have any other questions uh, for either dashboard or dark mode or dark theme, other or anything like that? I have one. Okay. And it's, it's kind of, it may be, be kind of strange. But um, if you are designing, developing courses, are you better off working in light mode where you might prefer to work in dark mode for light sensitivity reasons or whatever? <clears throat> but if most people are going to experience the course in light mode, um, but you're working in dark mode, is the transfer between the between the two going to confuse users who are actually using it in light mode after you've designed it in dark mode? Ah, that might be weird, but <laughs> um, well, hopefully the content that you're designing is such that it looks equally readable in both modes. Right. Um, so I would definitely kind of test it out. Um, whichever mode you prefer to work in, it shouldn't really matter. That's just kind of your preference. I do think at least right now, since dark theme is new, that probably the majority of users will still be in the, the light theme, at least to start. So they may not have switched over or they just don't know about it yet or they're still getting used to it. So I would expect that at least in the beginning, most people would be coming into it looking at it in light theme. So right. if that's, if that's going to matter in terms of what images you choose and things like that, um, then maybe I would start there. But then I would also be sure to preview it um, before you kind of make it public, preview it in dark theme to make sure that there's no glaring issues. Um, so that you, know, you don't notice, oh, that's terrible contrast. I can't have that there, um, that sort of thing. I know that there are just days when I prefer to work with the lights out. Yeah, 
Yeah. And that's totally valid. And that's why we have a dark theme. So, yeah. yeah so it really, it shouldn't matter. Hopefully the content will translate and it, all of the links within the application, like links to assignments and links to, um, you know, uh, you know, content and, and other tools. I mean, all that that's generated in Sakai, all the Sakai linking, and um, you know, shading and that sort of thing is going to be controlled by the skin. So it's really only the page content that you create that would, you know, any images you put on a page um, that would maybe um, be problematic. The stuff that you code a specific color could be problematic. If you st stick with defaults for your text fonts, um, then. Uh, you'll be a little bit better off because default font colors will translate. But if you set something a specific color, it might not. Well, I notice frequently the, the blue that comes up on hyperlinking against the black can be problematic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should probably put a Jira for that if there's not one already to uh, have a look at that. Color blue. I've red. noticed that as well. Yeah, in some reds. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's kind of weird in the weed stuff. <laughs> All right. Any other questions from anybody else? All right. Well, we're going to end a little bit early today. So everybody gets about 20 minutes back in their day. So you can uh, go check some emails or get some coffee or something. Um, and uh, the session recording will be available on the Sakai YouTube channel, probably in a couple of days, um, maybe next week sometime. Uh, we'll get it up there and then I will send the link out to folks. So uh, if they missed it or wanted to catch something again, they can watch the video. So thank you everyone for attending and I hope you have a great rest of your day and a wonderful weekend.